hell is going on here? You guys are wearing the exact same horrible t-shirt, you had the exact same thing to eat for lunch, and now you're reading the same magazine article at the same exact time? Is this some kind of prank or something? No, I honestly had no idea that George was going to wear this shirt today. <laughs> Actually, Mary, something incredible has happened. All this writing that John and I do about quantum physics has rubbed off on our brains. Our very thoughts have become entangled, just like subatomic particles. What do you mean? You guys don't look tangled up to me. No, 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 not tangled, entangled. That's when two particles that have interacted become a single indivisible system. And the weird thing is, even particles that are separated by large distances are still bound together on the quantum level. Exactly, that's why we showed up wearing the same t-shirt. Sounds kind of like ESP or something to me. Nope, not ESP, just physics. We can prove it. Okay, I'm game. But if I can prove this is just a prank, you guys will have to come and clean my bathroom for the next month. And if we can prove that we really are entangled? Well, then you'll both have very clean bathrooms for the next month. Deal. So the test will work like this. Conveniently, I've got two cards with an O or an X written on them. John and I will sit facing away from each other and put down one of those cards, either an X or an O. If our neurons are really entangled, you'll see that we put down the same side each time. Ready, flip. Ready, flip. Ready, flip. Ready, flip. So how'd we do? Same card every time. So there you have it, we're entangled. Mm, I'm not convinced yet. How do I know you guys don't have some kind of hidden signal or something? How about this? We'll do it again, but this time we'll put a little bit of distance between us, or even a lot of distance. I'll head over to Brooklyn and George will stay here with you. We'll do the experiment that we just did, but with a couple miles between us, and I'll call in the results to you. Then will you believe we're entangled? Um, yeah, I guess. By the way, this is how quantum particles really behave. Entanglement doesn't seem to be diminished with distance. John and I could be on opposite sides of the universe, and we'd still act in unison. Of course, Einstein didn't even believe this was possible. He called it a spooky action at a distance. All right, let's get this party started. Yeah, Georgia, why don't you walk me out? Uh, yeah. Oh, man, this is too funny. I know, if we actually pull this prank off, we're gonna go down in scientific American history. These horrible t-shirts are the best part. Have you seen the look on people's faces? I know, and Mary totally bought it, hook, line, and sinker. But we're gonna stick with the original plan, right? Yeah, yeah, odd numbers X, even numbers O. Okay, and the numbers are from the first 10 digits of pi? Yeah. Oh, you better get going. I think I saw her walk by. We don't want her to get too suspicious. So, let's just hear the results of our little experiment one more time. Well, you guys both got the same results even though one of you was here and the other one was in Brooklyn. Ha! That proves it. We're, We're entangled. entangled. And it's spooky distances. I'm starting to believe you, but barely. And I'm not ready to clean any toilets just yet. Ah, oh, yes. The bet. Well, what would it take to prove that we're right? I don't know. Let me sleep on it, and I'll see if I can come up with something. Okay, fair enough. See you tomorrow. Good morning! So I stayed up last night and did some reading, and I think I found an experiment that's going to put an end to your prank once and for all. Bring it on. <laughs> Great! Let's do it. Follow me. So what I have here, gentlemen, are cards with X's and O's on them. Just like the ones you used in your entanglement experiment. Except this time, I'm gonna make it a little more challenging for you guys. Instead of just having one card, you'll both have two cards. Sometimes I want you to match both cards, and sometimes mismatch both cards. And I'd like you to sit on either side of this divider. Oh, heck, this looks like the John Bell experiment. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. So what I'm gonna do is point to either the right or the left card. And when I do, you're gonna take that card and flip either an X or an O. So what I want to have happen is when I point to both of your right hands, you'll get a mismatch. However, any other combination, and you'll get a match. The trick is, you can't see each other, so you won't know which hand I'm pointing to on the other side. 
But since you're entangled, that shouldn't matter. You can get a match or a mismatch regardless, right? We're screwed. Ready, flip. Ready, flip. I got you. You guys got the exact same answer every time. Oh, you totally got us. There's no way we could prearrange things to match that outcome. So that's it. You guys did prearrange things. Well, yeah. Now that we're fessing up, we were using the digits of pi. But how did you know to use the Bell experiment on us? I mean, it took physicists three decades to figure that out, yeah. and you got it overnight? Well, let's just say I did a little late night reading. Or maybe a lot of late night reading. Genius. You're a genius. This is the exact experiment that quantum physicists use to tell if quantum entanglement is spooky action at a distance or just looks that way. But what would make it just look that way? Well, sort of like what we were doing with the digits of pi. The particles have some kind of mechanism or built-in computer that allows them to synchronize their answers. Now, the difference is that particles really can be spookily connected and we human beings can't. So, just to make sure I've got this straight, if George and I are like two photons and we were entangled, a physicist could measure us in two ways, and each measurement could have an X or an O as the outcome. Now, if we're entangled, the outcome for me depends on the outcome for George, so we can coordinate the outcomes in a way that we couldn't otherwise do. We could decide to get the same outcomes for left-left, left-right, or right-left, and mismatch only for right-right. We can be very selective, and there's no way to pull that off by cheating. Right, and if we're not entangled, the answers that I give don't depend on the answers that John gives. They're totally independent. So we can't coordinate our answers on the fly. We're locked in from the beginning. Either we always give the same result, or we always get different results, but we can't mix it up. Okay guys, that was a great explanation, but what I really want to know is if the two of you can coordinate your particles and come over to my apartment this weekend to clean my bathroom. Well, George, I believe we've learned our lesson. Maybe. But I have an idea how to pull it off better next time. What do you mean, next time? Well, John, I know a professor who can teach us a thing or two about quantum entanglement. But in the meantime, 